So we are going to make the first joint. You got five pieces. You should have scratched your initials in with a scratch all, not a Sharpie. I used a Sharpie because that's what I had. Uh, on all five pieces, we're gonna take two pieces and the other three, we're gonna stick these back in your locker so they don't get lost. We're gonna start with two pieces. They've got your name on them. We are going to do some marking and some measuring. I'm gonna introduce some new tools to you before we do anything. This is an awesome tool. This is called a divider. It looks like a compass if you've taken math class. Uh, we can use it to draw curves just like we would in math. We don't actually use that here very often. We use this for drawing straight lines. If I had my ruler here, I could set this gap, I could set this down on my ruler and I could move it over to a measurement, say a quarter of an inch and tighten this thumb screw. And if I hook one edge on the metal and then I push this edge down and I scratch that line, we just scratched a perfectly parallel line. Didn't have to use the rule, mark two arrows and scratch a line and it will be very, very accurate. So we really like this tool for drawing parallel lines. Again, this is called a divider. The other tool we'll be using is a ball peen hammer. We will uh, we'll use this. We'll show you a little more how to use this as efficiently as possible. We're going to use a hand groover. We're also going to be using this punch. This is called a prick punch. One of the other punches we use a fair bit is called a center punch. If you look at the tips, you'll notice they're different. This one is not as sharp as this one. They're both in need of sharpening. This one's been hammered into the, the vise or the anvil over there a little too much, so it's been dented. But if you look at the angles, this one's a lot pokier than this one. They have different purposes. We use this one for staking, and this one is for marking the center of holes. So we're not using this one. We are going to use this one. Something to keep in mind when we use punches, as we're pounding on these with a hammer, the metal is a lot like Play-Doh. It mushes. If you were to look at the back of that, you can see how it's been mushed down and it's starting to push out. This is called mushrooming. Uh, this is okay still, but as this gets bigger and bigger, it's going to start to crack and little pieces can fly off when we start pounding on it with the hammer. So we want to make sure it doesn't get too bad. If it does start to mushroom worse, bring it over to me and I'll take it over to the grinder and I smooth the back end off just like this one. So let's get started on this step. I'm going to use my ruler. And we're going to start by marking kind of hems on these two pieces. So I'm going to use my dividers. I'm going to set my divider to one fourth of an inch. So I'm going to loosen that thumb screw. I've got it set there. I'm going to slide it in to where I've got a fourth of an inch between them. Tighten it up. Double check. Make sure it's right. Now. You do have to be careful if you squeeze this really hard while you're scratching, it can, um, it can move, the, move the measurement. So it, it can make crooked lines if we're not careful. Yeah, same thing if it's a little wider, if you're pushing on it with your thumb, it can actually push these apart and ruin your, your line. So I'm gonna set this on there, I'm gonna hook that end, I'm gonna scratch on one of those and scratch on one side here. So we've got two lines that we have scratched, a quarter of an inch, just as easy as that. Didn't have to measure and mark our two arrows. We're ready to go do something new. We're going to go to our metal bender, which is called the box and pan break. Let's head over there and set this up. 
So we've marked our two quarter inch lines with the scratch, or sorry, not the scratch, all the dividers. We're now gonna bend these. We're going to almost make a hem. So we're gonna do the first part. I've got my line right there where I want it. Clamp it, I'm gonna bend it as far as it'll go. Just like that. Do that again. Now we're going to smash them a little farther because right now if we try and hook these together, they're pretty wobbly. So I'm going to mash that down a little bit. I'm not going to close it all the way like we would with a hem because we still want that piece of metal to be able to slide in there. So just like if we were making a hem, we're going to close the fingers. I'm going to set that on there, but I'm going to watch right here as I bend that it doesn't close it all the way. So I'm looking right here and you, you got to watch both ends because sometimes it will close one end more than the other. Especially if, if we put this in crooked. If it tips up and when we start sometimes this will push up more on one side and it will push this side all the way closed and this side not as much. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna do that twice. So let me do the other one. So again, we're watching, smashing. We want it fairly close, but we don't want it all the way crushed. So now with both of those, if we hook those together, it's not too bad. We're ready to go make some noise at the steak table, so let's head over there. We're at the steak table. Uh, take a look at this. We have a couple of vices. We've got some anvils. We've got some small anvils. And this is the steak table part. So these pieces down here are, in effect, different style anvils. We can set that up there and we can use that to pound on. Uh, we don't want to hammer out here on the vices. Back here on the saddle, this is okay to pound on, not the table. If you listen, let's see if it'll show up on the, the uh, video. Hammering on this versus hammering on this. Much louder. Hurts my ears. Don't do that. I do have earplugs available. If you would like to use some earplugs, that's an option. Uh, first thing I want to show you, if, if we did make a mistake and one of these sides got a little closed, so you can see that side is closed, uh, we can fix it with a screwdriver. These are over in locker number three as well. I'm going to use this, I'm going to stick it in, and I'm going to twist it, and that will pry it up. Important not to do it with your hand on the wrong side, because if you slip and stab your hand, that's going to be a little unpleasant. Let's not do that. So I'm holding it over here. I'm going to slide that in. I'm going to slide it across and twist, twist. So I'm just sliding it across as I go. All right. So these should, these two pieces should hook together. And you see how, because I bent that side, it doesn't quite fit as tight as it should. We can set this whole thing on the edge of something and tap just a little bit and tap that down and now it's nice and tight. So here's where we start pounding on things. I'm going to use my hammer. There are different size hammers so if the bigger hammer is hard for you to hold down at the end, get a smaller hammer. You're much more effective when you hold the hammer at the bottom than if you're trying to do something like this. You'll be here all day long and not get anything done. So hold the hammer down here on the end we're going to smash this, so I'm going to use my hammer, and I'm going to just on, just on this corner, I'm pushing the two together so they're tight, and smash that down a little bit, 
and now I'm going to stake it with the prick punch. So right in the middle, right there, we're going to put a dent. We're not punching a hole. And we don't want to go so hard we go clear through our metal. That's how the, it flattens the tip. What we're looking for is something like that. With that dent, those two pieces of metal won't come apart. Still spins on this side because we haven't done that yet. So let's do that side. Same thing, pushing it together, hammer it a little bit so it's nice and tight. Double check, make sure it didn't come apart. We're going to stake that side. All right. So now we could call that a seam, but we're going to make it even better. I'm going to smash this down a little bit. We don't have to go hog wild. It's important to keep the face of the flat hammer flat too. If you tip it, you start pounding over here, it's going to start bending your metal. So I'm going to work my way across that. Make it a little tighter. We've got two stakes in here. We're going to kind of use our drawing the inch rule, which is cut and double. I'm going to put another stake right in the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect, but estimate it. Okay, cut and double again. So when we're done, we're gonna have five stakes. We have just created a seam. We're gonna go a little further and we're gonna turn this into a grooved seam. This is where the hand groover comes into play. Doesn't matter which side. We're going to hook this on the edge, just like that, stand it up straight, and basically we're gonna pound the crap out of this thing, and it's gonna smash the other side down so that instead of a step, we have a flat side with a bump. So let's show you how this works. All right, so I've got it clamped on, or hooked on there kinda. Stand it up. All right, so I've started. You can see over here it's flat with a bump, but over on this side, it's still a step. So we're going to continue all across this. And again, if you do it too much, metal is like Play Doh, and we're hammering on these two sides, and the metal will actually start to curl. We don't want to do that but we do need to hit it fairly hard. We work our way across. You can see it did curl a little bit, but this is not a big deal. We can kind of tweak it just a little bit with our hands. And with that a little flatter, we've just made a grooved seam. Now, nice and tight. Uh, the edges are all tight in there. It's staked. It's very, very hard to take that apart and when done right. There's step two. Cutting was first step. Grooved seam, second step. Next, we're going to show you how to put some pop rivets in.